Hi guys, my name is Marcel and today you and me are going through all the steps of designing a character. Like a son. So in this video we'll start from the very beginning all the way to the very end. And don't worry, all of these rules discussed in today's videos go for any style. Doesn't matter if you prefer manga, cartoon, comic style or anything else. I'm already experienced in designing characters and today I'm going to show you how I'm doing that and everything you need to know about it. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! So let's start at step number zero. Because before drawing your character you first need some basic idea about him or her. You know like the age or gender of your character but most importantly you need to have an idea about their personality. If you are unexperienced and you start out drawing a character design without any idea of your character's identity, it's gonna end up looking... pretty bland. That's actually a big problem with anime. Since it's such a cutthroat industry, character designs in anime original shows tend to look pretty generic because it's quantity over quality at this point. So before you start out, think of a vibe or an emotion your character should portray. Like, for example, aggressive or arrogant, devious, confidence, <laughs> trauma. <laughs> Having a vibe to your character is so important. Like, what can you tell me about this character? What's his vibe? This guy looks like his favorite food is toast, but without jam on it. And without being toasted. So, once you have a general idea of your character, you can apply it to a basic body. We are drawing an 18 year old male as an example, so this would be the base for it. If you are already having trouble here, I have some videos about anatomy and how to draw humans. They are easy to follow for beginners, just check them out if you are struggling with this. And you might not have noticed it, but this is where character design has already started. This basic body can already give off a vibe, that's why I told you to already have a character personality in mind. The stance of your character can already tell you so much about them if you draw it expressive enough. I mean just looking at this kind of tells you what I mean by that, right? But this isn't only true for the pose of your character, this also goes for the physique of your drawing. My favorite example for this is One Piece. It feels like the physique of these characters can already tell you a lot about them. It feels like the very bodies of these characters have been designed with their personality already in mind. So as you can see in One Piece, the physique of a character can already give off a certain vibe because the artist likes to stretch their anatomy so much. Get it? Stretching? <laughs> So even if you just keep one thing from this video, please remember that character design isn't about adding details to desperately make your character unique. A character design starts with the very base. Yeah, even if your character is athletic and fit, there are several ways to draw muscles, like bulky, lean and slim. If you stick with one physique for all of your characters, even if they are muscular, this feels very samey. Now that you have your base, we can further work on your character. And don't ever forget, we want to always have the vibe in mind we are going for. Everything you're adding should be something that's actually conveying this vibe or emotion. If you are just adding random stuff for the sake of making your character design look unique, all you are getting at the end is a character that looks like an NFT. But Marcel, there are so many clothes I could add to my character and I don't know what could be a good fit and I don't have any taste in fashion. Don't worry, I'll help you with that. I mean, that's why you subscribe to this channel for after all, right? Right? Here's an age-old example to see what fits your character. Here are two forms. One of them is called Baba and one of them is called Zaza. So, how did you know that this one's called Zaza and this one's called Baba? That's right, because things like edges and sharp Z sounds give off a harsh vibe, while the same goes for softer sounds and visuals. And that's a nice guideline to build your characters around. This very example is something that pros have used for decades now. If you have no idea about character design, this is the easiest way to get started. So this way you kinda get a clue what kind of clothing or hairstyle suits your character. 
I, for example, designed Poseidon with harsher, pointier features in mind because he should give off a very intimidating and strong look, while his wife, Amphitrite, has almost exclusively soft features. And yes, if you look closely, this even applies to little things like accessories. Even the most minuscule things like, for example, the cleavage of a t-shirt can make a difference. And if you feel like that's a bit too on the nose and you don't want to make a character that consists of round shapes only, you can still add some pointy elements to spice it up. I think this works pretty well, this kinda lets you know that this kind of character is mostly very kind, but also has some temper. Uh, yeah, by the way, that's not something that I came up with, having soft features, but then adding a little something to show that this character isn't all fun and games is something character designers have used for decades now, and it still works like a charm. That's also because you ideally want to create a unique silhouette. That's more or less the way Pokemon have been designed back in the day. They consist of very simple shapes with a little something added to them. And bam, you have a unique silhouette. Or at least that's how they used to design Pokemon back in the day. Apparently Pokemon look like spaceships nowadays. And maybe you already guessed it, but everything I just told you about the shapes with hair and clothing works the exact same way with the face as well. Here, take a look at this. I've designed characters that consist of soft shapes, hard shapes and, well, anything in between. So if I'm designing a character that should give off a completely soft vibe, then I make sure this is reflected in, for example, their eyes. That's why most eyes are based off of simple shapes. I'm pretty sure you've seen this before, and in case you didn't or you just feel lost here, yeah, you guessed it. I've also made a tutorial on this topic. Drawing eyes is a whole thing for itself, but I think you got the point by now. So let's pick the colors for your character. And just like with the shapes, there are also some nice coloring ideas for you to use. And for that, we need a color wheel. There are some very easy ways to tell what kind of color fits your character, namely with schemes. I think it's always fun to Google color schemes and get inspired that way, but I can show you the most simple one for starters. The most simple ones are analog schemes, where you just pick colors from one side. For example, there are warm color schemes, where you just use colors on the warmer side of the spectrum. However, just like back with the shapes, where you can add some spice, color works the very same way. There are character designs that make use of complementary colors. Those are colors that are on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. So adding opposite colors makes your character pop. Just look at how samey this design of Hades would look with red fire and red hair. If you view it from a distance, all of this blends together to one single blob of reddish color. But adding an opposite color that completely stands out makes the design a lot more memorable. A lot of character designs are drawn this way where you add a color that's on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, just to spice things up. Believe me, this wasn't even the tip of the iceberg. There are so many schemes to pick from. Just give it a Google search. It's really inspiring. Also, in case you can't get enough of character design, you can check out my art book with all of my character designs and illustrations, as well as the manga series I created. They are all available on my website. Just take a look if you want to see more. Back on topic, maybe you looked at this and said, those aren't a lot of colors. I want to use more colors. A big beginner mistake is to use every color under the sun in order to make your character pop. Just like with the design itself, less is more. Simple shapes, simple colors. That's also because color invokes emotion. A character with only warm colors could look very friendly. Then there's playful, cool, happy, Aneurysm. You see what I mean by that, having too many colors also doesn't convey a clear emotion. The only emotion I get from this is trauma again because this looks like a human form of rainbow road. Also, the worst offender is always saturation. Don't ever use the brightest, most saturated colors, your character will look like a deep fried meme. For character design, you usually use muted colors. And in case you wonder why, that's because you still need wiggle room in both directions, bright and dark. They will be added later on when you shade or highlight the characters. And now, 
I think it's time for a bonus part! In this video, I talked about everything from designing the base all the way to coloring your character. So in theory, you're good to go. But there's one important tip I still have for you. And that's to keep your medium in mind. Like, what are you using this character for? Basically, if you design your character, you always need to have in mind how it looks like in the medium you are portraying them in. Most of my subscribers are interested in drawing manga, so let's take this as an example. In manga, it's extremely important to have a good black to white ratio. If I didn't add Arizona's black elements, as well as her dark fire pattern, in a manga format, she would lack contrast. Without any black or grey elements, this would look way too bright. So when designing your character, keep in mind that you should have some darker elements in your design as well, because you don't want your character to look like a white empty shape with a couple of outlines. I could talk about this whole topic for ages, but I already spent weeks on animating and editing this video, so I think I'm calling it quits here. In case you still want more though, I have a lot of other tutorials on my channel as well, it's basically all you need to start improving your artwork. You can also take a look at my manga playlist, I'm making tutorials about how to create your own manga series, maybe that tickles your fancy. As I just said, all of these videos are a ton of work and you can support me by leaving a thumbs up, a comment or going the extra mile by supporting me on Patreon. By the way, patrons get to see these videos at least one day earlier, so maybe that's something you're interested in. Don't feel pressured though, just watching my videos and leaving a nice comment goes a long way as well. Anyways, my name is Marcel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.